Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo Vinuesa. I'm an associate professor at KTH in Stockholm and today we're going to be talking about uh, turbulence and in particular we're going to give you a short introduction about turbulence. So first of all, what is turbulence? Well, turbulent flows uh, exhibit a number of very characteristic properties. They're chaotic, eh, both in space and time. They exhibit fluctuations. Uh, they're three-dimensional and time-dependent and they uh, basically lead to dissipation of kinetic energy into heat. So this is actually quite important. Uh, turbulence is characterized by a wide spectrum of scales, which are basically sizes eh, of, of eddies, of coherent motions. Um, and these uh, coherent motions, these uh, swirls, they're usually called eddies, but we will see many other nomenclatures uh, later on. Uh, what we want to also highlight is that turbulence is characterized by the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number, which you can see here, is the product of a characteristic velocity, a characteristic length, and this is divided by the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. Remember that the kinematic viscosity of the fluid is the ratio of the molecular viscosity and the density of the fluid. Uh, and the Reynolds number, what it shows is that um, if we have problems that are very large and problems that are going at very high speed um, and flows that are not very viscous, then of course this number will get bigger and we will uh, more, richly, more easily reach the, the turbulent state. Right? So uh, more uh, turbulent uh, states are associated with higher Reynolds numbers. I want to show you also this visualization over here. Uh, this is showing uh, the characteristic coherent motions, the swirls that I've been talking about, uh, and you can actually see something very interesting, and it's, uh, turbulence uh, is associated with a number of scales. So these eddies, these vortices, uh, exhibit different sizes. You have larger ones, you have smaller ones. Um, here, we are having something called isotropic turbulence, which means that we don't have the wall which in previous videos you saw that the wall can segregate the flow into different cascades in different locations. Here, uh, all the fluctuations are scaled in the same way in the domain. Um, we don't have a velocity gradient. The fluctuations are sustained through forcing. And this is basically a quite canonical, quite easy example of turbulence that can really help us to identify its uh, most characteristic properties, no? basically the things that we are discussing here. So keep in mind these swirling motions, these uh, structures of different sizes, because this is something very, very important in turbulence. Now, uh, turbulent flows are all around us. Uh, as you can see, all these videos are characteristic uh, well, images no? of, of turbulence. I uh, produce all of them using generative AI, so basically stable diffusion. So there might be some uh, connection between deep learning and what we actually know uh, about turbulence. Um, of course, uh, you can see from airplanes to uh, wind turbines, uh, this uh, plume in a volcano, cars, cyclones, all this phenomena is around us and is uh, basically quite closely connected with turbulent flows. Uh, turbulence is uh, basically uh, governed by the, by the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, these are uh, the equations governing fluid flows. Um, the Navier-Stokes equations are uh, a manifestation of conservation of mass and also conservation of momentum. Uh, in incompressible form, you can see them here. The first one is basically the divergence of the velocity field, which is equal to zero. And this is the for an incompressible flow, the continuity equation. And in the second line, you can see the uh, conservation of momentum uh, for uh, the instantaneous velocity field. Eh? So you have the, uh, basically the, the viscous terms, you have the pressure gradient term, the nonlinear terms which are associated with the convection, and then the time derivative uh, if the problem is unsteady. So again, the Navier-Stokes equations are associated with the conservation of mass and also the conservation of momentum. These are, of course, uh, quite complex PDEs, which are, uh, in general, not solvable analytically. That's why we use uh, numerical simulations to be able to integrate these equations in time and get uh, information about the flow. We have some other videos in the channel where we talk about um, simulations of turbulence. Uh, here, I just want to give you a little bit of an idea of how computationally intensive it is to uh, to simulate uh, the Navier-Stokes equations no? in, in complex uh, scenarios where we want to resolve all the scales. Essentially, to simulate one second of flight on an Airbus A320 at 250 meters per second, 10,000 meters uh, height, um, 
well, we would need uh, basically uh, in a teraflop machine, uh, which are most of the machines that exist nowadays, uh, 800,000 years. That's a very, very large amount of time. Um, if we want the results uh, in a week, we would need a machine of 40 exaflops. Now we have some uh, exascale machines, although we are still in the process of fully exploiting all its potential. Uh, these are estimates based by, on John Kim's uh, work at TSFP. This is now eight years ago. Uh, so currently, uh, there are perhaps a bit more um, optimistic uh, estimates based on CPUs. This is all based on CPUs. Perhaps the area where we are experiencing much more potential and more uh, possibilities nowadays is on GPUs, no? graphics processing units, uh, which are really uh, revolutionizing the possibilities that we have nowadays to compute uh, fluid flows to perform DNS in a very rain wide range of complex um, geometries and architectures. So I believe that uh, some of these estimates might go down well, I don't know if significantly, but at least uh, in some sizable way uh, in the next years by exploiting GPUs. Now, let's talk more about turbulence and in particular what happens with the wall. When we talked before about isotropic turbulence, we said that the fluctuations and the sizes of the structures were the same everywhere. And the wall, what it's doing is to um, basically segregate the flow. And so each wall normal location has its own cascade. Each wall normal location has its production and dissipation. And whatever is a large or a small scale uh, might be of different size depending on the wall normal location. So the wall is very important. Um, of course, uh, turbulence is responsible for the friction drag, which uh, increases fuel consumption. This is one of the biggest uh, contributors to uh, the global uh, energetic uh, consumption worldwide. Uh, and turbulence is a multi-scale phenomenon. This is very important. Um, we have a streaky patterns, uh, which are present at different wall normal locations. What I'm showing you here at the bottom is basically um, the flow uh, in a turbulent channel. Uh, this is the horizontal uh, plane the uh, stringwise um, velocity fluctuations instantaneously. So blue and red denote positive and negative fluctuations. This is a very low Reynolds number, friction Reynolds number of 180, but still you can see the uh, characteristic patterns. So here you see the wall normal locations, way plus 15, that's in the near wall region where the fluctuations are stronger. And you can see the uh, blue and red streaks, you know? so the, basically the, uh, the high and low uh, speed streaks with positive and negative fluctuations, which are present as I go farther away from the wall. So if I go now to a plus 30, 50, and 100, you still see those uh, streaky patterns uh, that have a, a manifestation at the wall. This is something important. Because in turbulence, you have two ways of uh, interscale interaction. One is the linear one, which is the superposition. So large scales leaving their footprint close to the wall, that's the linear superposition. And that can be represented by many linear uh, methods. But uh, there's also a nonlinear modulation. And that's a scale interaction mechanism that is related with different uh, frequencies, uh, the wide spectrum that we were talking about before. And that really leads to uh, enhancement of fluctuations in different locations. So these tricky patterns are um, very characteristic of turbulence uh, and at y plus 15, very close to the walls in this region, uh, we observe at low and moderate Reynolds numbers uh, most of the production of turbulent kinetic energy. So this is a very essential region of the flow, basically the heart of turbulence where things are actually being produced. And then of course um, there's both types of cascades, direct and inverse. There's a direct cascade from large scales to smaller ones, but also there is production close to the wall in smaller scales that somehow has to reach the larger uh, and more energetic scales in the outer region, right? And that's associated with that uh, inverse mechanism that one can actually try to take into account as well. So these are very complex phenomena, multi-scale, non-linear, um, and these are some of the challenges that we face when we try to model turbulent flows. But that's also what makes this uh, physical problem exciting and um, well, uh, wishing us to study and try to learn more about it. So to learn more about it and to try to understand more about the physics of this problem, uh, we can look at the governing equations, uh, which I mentioned before uh, already. Uh, these are the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, let's look at a statistically two-dimensional flow. Uh, so uh, this means that the third direction is uh, homogeneous statistically. Uh, so one can always average in that direction. 
and uh, we can uh, cast the governing equations, continuity and momentum conservation uh, as a function of x and y. So basically the uh, horizontal and vertical coordinates. That first equation that we have here, that's the, um, basically the continuity equation. These are partial differential equations. So these are complicated equations to solve. That's what we discussed about the uh, computer time. Uh, but basically this first equation in an incompressible flow uh, indicates that we have um, conservation of mass, essentially. Remember that an incompressible flow is a flow in which the density is not changing. Yeah? So that simplifies a little bit the conservation of mass. Um, and then the second and third equations would be the conservation of momentum in the x and y directions respectively. Once again, remember the first term would be the time derivative, so basically the unsteady term. Then we have the uh, nonlinear terms, which have to do with the convection, the pressure gradient, and then the viscous term, which has to do with the Laplacian of the velocity. Um, and this Reynolds number over here is introducing the term connected with, with nu, right? with the viscosity, which is then leading to the dissipation of this, um, the viscous uh, dissipation of these uh, of this fluctuations in the flow. Now, we can work a little bit with these governing equations. There is something called the Reynolds decomposition, and the Reynolds decomposition is one of the uh, first tools that we have to study turbulence in a statistical manner. Turbulence is highly chaotic, as we mentioned before. We looked at those vortices, at those motions. Uh, it's unsteady, it's an unsteady problem. Uh, what we can do is take a velocity signal. For example, the, if u is the u fluctuation, we can take the instantaneous signal and then express it as a mean value, that's the capital U, plus a fluctuation. Okay? So essentially, when we are um, applying Reynolds decomposition, the instantaneous uh, signal is going to be a mean plus a fluctuation about that mean. And that re Reynolds decomposition can be applicable to all the variables in our problem. So we can apply it for the stringwise fluctuations, we can apply it for the wall normal, the spanwise, and for the pressure. And we can apply this Reynolds decomposition to the instantaneous governing equations. So if we plug in this decomposition into the x momentum equation, and this is just uh, to illustrate the example. So basically into this equation over here, I'm going to replace u tilde is equal to u plus lowercase u, and so on. Then I get all of this equation over here. Yeah? So basically I have all this decomposition, and what I can do is average in time. So the average in time is denoted by an overline. Note that this average in time is also extended to average in, in periodic directions. So if I, if I have a channel, I can also uh, average in the stringwise and spanwise directions. But for the sake of this example, let's purely average in time right now. Uh, this average in time will lead to the following result. The mean in time of the fluctuations will be zero by definition because those fluctuations are defined with respect to a mean value. So if I average those fluctuations, uh, I will get a zero. So basically, u bar, v bar, w bar, p bar, and u w bar, all of them will be zero. Uh, um, that's actually helpful because uh, then we can manipulate our governing equations to uh, try to obtain something useful. So when we have um, the two me, uh, two-dimensional mean flow equations, we can obtain the so-called RANs, the Reynolds Average and Average Stokes Equations. Remember the Reynolds Average because we apply the Reynolds decomposition first and then we average in time and over the periodic directions. Uh, what we can do if we manipulate a little bit the X momentum equation using incompressibility and then manipulate them a bit with some algebraic steps, then I end up with this equation over here. Okay? And this equation, what it has, is, uh, is basically a PDE for uh, the mean flow. So basically for U, for capital V, for the pressure. So I have everything for the mean except for two terms over here. This U square and this UV. And they have overbars, which means that they are something average in time. These are basically uh, velocity fluctuations or also called Reynolds stresses. And these Reynolds stresses are basically the impact of the fluctuations on the mean flow. So basically what I do with these fluctuations is that I can try to uh, well, model and try to uh, calculate the evolution of our flow field 
uh, for the mean, uh, but I need to account for these terms that are uh, the fluctuations. The Zeno's stresses, um, well, they are introducing something called the closure problem, because, uh, of course, I have now governing equations for the mean, but I have more unknowns than equations, right? I have all the unknowns associated with Reynolds stresses, plus the governing equations that are for the mean quantities, uh, which means that these equations are unsolved. Uh, they're not closed. We need to find a way to close these equations. This brings what is called the whole field of turbulence modeling. In turbulence modeling, what we do is find uh, equations, typically empirical or with some physical uh, influence, to try to relate this u squared, this uv, all these turbulent quantities, I want to relate them with mean quantities or other known quantities about the flow in such a way that I can close these equations, that I can obtain uh, a solution to my closure problem. And again, uh, we will have videos about that. That's uh, the whole field of RANS modeling. Uh, also, LES modeling is uh, focused to some extent also on uh, being able to tackle this uh, closure problem. So we will have a lot of information about this. The main idea is that this closure problem needs to be tackled in order to uh, understand the flow, at least from this statistical perspective of the RANS equations. Okay, and I want to uh, thank you very much for uh, listening today. Uh, as usual, all our data and codes are available in this QR code, so feel free to get everything, all the information there, and reach out if you have any questions. Uh, and I would like to uh, thank everybody who made this video possible, uh, in particular InfraBiz and the KTH Visualization Studio. Uh, as always, if you have more questions, you can always reach out by email, by social media, and you can uh, have a look at the channel for the rest of videos. Thank you very much and see you next time.